Apart from going into further details about the orchids I currently have in bloom, there is a 9 second intro coming up. We have fought so hard to get these orchids to bloom, so while the intro is running would you please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already done so. I would really appreciate that and oh, let's look at some of them more closely. We're gonna go from left to right. Now there's more on the patio that is in bloom, but it didn't fit on the table. We'll have a look at those as well. The first one in the back left there is my Dendrobium nephrits. Alex Poli has been in bloom for quite some time now. Had five spikes. One spike has already finished blooming and I still have a spike with some buds to open. I'm so happy that this one is blooming for such a long time because I love the intricacy of the blooms. Even though indoors she is not fragrant, out here she has sort of a musty sweet honey scent. It is not very very obvious because I don't leave them out in the sun for too long, seeing as they have not been hardened off across the board. So if that happens to be a repetition, I do apologize. But Nafet Alex Poli performed beautifully, thankfully, because they are highlight orchids. And well, at the moment, light isn't what I have to offer her because she doesn't come outside during the days when they, we have some sunshine on the patio. Next to her is my Oncostelli Wildcat Golden Red Star. She was a rescue maybe three or four years ago. And well, she's been through a lot with me. Once I rescued her, she bloomed beautifully and then I dropped the ball and didn't continue really caring for her and almost lost her again. Shame, that's not going to happen again. So she is in bloom now for the first time with two spikes, which is amazing as well. I used to get only one spike. My first spike after rescuing her, it was a bigger one. It was a branching one. However, I was fertilizing a lot heavier because all my installations indoors were up and running. Now I'm very conservative on the fertilizer front. But after having her dip again and becoming a rescue orchid again, getting her to spike with two spikes for the first time, I am well pleased. A very striking orchid coming into bloom is my Dendrobium berry odor. Right now, I am just mesmerized by the spikes, the structure, the architecture, and how beautifully the buds are shaping up there with a beautiful deep grape color. Meanwhile, I do enjoy the blooms as well, don't get me wrong, but seeing these spikes and the way the buds present themselves, I absolutely love this orchid for what she's doing right now. She has also been through a lot. Let's say she's only 50% of what she used to be. She went through a massive division and then she looked a little bit ratty last year. Now we're getting a beautiful show and display again, like a wonderful bouquet in a pot, which is difficult to see the way I've displayed these orchids. But when she's on the east side of the patio, I actually enjoy her as a centerpiece of that table. Yes, she lives outside all year round in my climate, but she can handle it. She can tolerate it. And oh, I'm so grateful because she's a big one. Moreover, as we move further to the right, still in the back row, is the Yokosuka Story. Now, she is indoors for the duration of the winter, but she gets a lot of bright light because I have her right up against the glass of my grow space. And, well, that is where my big reed stem kind of epidendrum hybrids live. So she lives along with them because the care is all similar. However, she got a little bit of a cold flush. I assume it came from the draft between the terrace door and the glass itself. That doesn't shut snug. So the cold nights, cold air comes in, even though I try to protect everything with towels and stuffed towels around there. She has three blooms, which is standard for her, but this year I am seeing that one bloom looks a little bit bruised, and as it was developing in bud stage, the cold got a little bit out of petal. Another one, you can see that the column isn't exactly perfect, but still I've got the colors. I love these colors. They're so cheerful and spring-like. She is not fragrant to my nose, unfortunately, despite her parent being a Digbiana, but her colors are gorgeous and she's relatively long-lasting. Going back to fragrance, I didn't mention that the Berry Oda is fragrant. She has a beautiful honeysuckle sweet fragrance. 
Not at the moment that obvious because not all the blooms are open, but if you go to a single bloom right now, you can smell it, as opposed to when she fully opens, she has sort of a wafting, permeating fragrance around her, which is relatively obvious. The Oncostella Wildcat, sorry that I'm going back a step, she is not fragrant in my climate at all. Whether she is fragrant elsewhere, I have no idea, but for me, she's not. Speaking of fragrant orchids, let's go there. We've got the beautiful Lutins Blanc on the right below the Yokosuka story. Now this one has been in bloom for a very long time. Very grateful for that. She is always in the sunshine in the grow space, so she doesn't live outside even though she could tolerate it. But because it takes so long for these spikes to form, the buds, etc., risking bud blast with the volatile temperatures up and down and then dropping into single digits for an extended period of time. I didn't want to risk the blooming because she does put on a beautiful little show with her spotting and well, interesting gnarly warty bloom. So she stayed inside while the spikes were forming and now I can enjoy the beautiful molasses sweet fragrance that she exudes. She's already bloomed for me now for two months and while some blooms are fading she is still looking the part and it's so nice to have these in my grow space when things are a little bit <clears throat> yeah depressing let's just say. <laughs> Okay, and on the front, right at the front, is my Dendrobium Pocket Lover in bloom once again. Very surprising. Now, this one needs to settle into my climate, so I have been bringing her in and out, despite the fact she was in bud. She didn't have any bud blast, but the blooms are struggling with keeping their pristine whiteness because of the constant movement. Still, for the health of the orchid, I move her in and out. She's got a new growth coming. I want to encourage that. She had spider mite issues in the last summer of 2022, so I need this orchid to grow strong. There are three pieces in the pot, one new growth, and that gives me a lot of hope. She smells of a beautiful fresh lemon sugar. It's delicious. I'm not able to appreciate that fragrance for too long because it's not warm enough, but when I carry her inside after a day outdoors, I can put her to my nose and appreciate that gorgeous fragrance. One that I can smell right from where I am stood is my Prostechia Garciana Alba. And she is now in her prime. I've still got more buds coming, but this is her mega flush of blooms. This is when she shines, always this time of year, and she has filled her bowl up beautifully. I keep an eye on her. Even though she lives indoors constantly during the winter, I do have her at a lower shelf where she gets a lot of light. However, I have to really keep an eye on her because mealybugs also like this beautiful, very intense, rich, elegant talcum powder fragrance. It really does perfume the space around her. When I bring orchids inside and I'm walking back and forth and she is on the lower shelf, I can really smell her every time I walk past her. While she doesn't need direct sun to start smelling so beautifully, the more sun she gets on her, the more intense she is. And while I've been preparing this little display, oh, she started to really push her fragrance out. Delicious. I love the sparkly blooms, even though they are a little bit crowded. The presentation when she blooms this profusely really makes for a wonderful display. And still in bloom, just a little bit fighting. I've got a few more blooms of my Oncidesa Sweet Sugar. Totally sweet, but you can see that the branch is the one that's holding on the main spike has already faded. Got two new growths coming on this orchid, so happy days. This one is still on its original mount. I think it's so pretty. I am loath to take it off. She's also a climber. And while I can take care of her and keep up with her watering needs during the warmer months of the year, that mount can stay until it pretty much falls apart, which is happening slowly but surely. I have to be careful where I hold the orchid when I bring her inside at night. But yeah, it's becoming a little bit brittle, that mount. So I'm going to have to start planning a little bit in my mind what I want to do with this orchid. But it's wonderful to have a cheerful yellow pop of color as well. It's lovely to be able to carry orchids inside when they're in bloom because, you know, it makes for a wonderful shuffle experience. <laughs> Off to the right of this little display is my Colmenara Masai Red coming into bloom. 
I'm really fighting to keep the beautiful white pollinia intact. They are very, very delicate. A breeze will pop them off. They are not fragrant blooms, but oh my goodness, she does make a statement at this point in time. I have moved her away from the hedge where she normally lives because I want to protect those blooms. I don't want the spikes to break. Again, if we speak about the architecture of spikes, I can tell you that this is another one that I'm mesmerized by because as they grow, they start to be green at the apex of the pseudobulb, and then they develop further, and they literally turn black before the burgundy of the bud starts to show, and then the bloom opens into a rich, velvety lip, and oh my word, what a display. Aptly named this orchid. When I look at her, when I see her, when I remember the spears of the Maasai tribe in Kenya, she is aptly named. And kudos to whoever had the wherewithal to make that comparison because, wow, when we look at orchid names, sometimes we wonder, how did they come up with that name? Well, with Maasai Red, they nailed it. For a short while, I also had my Rincolelia Catlia Golf Green Hair Pig in Bloom even though not on the table, maybe I'm cheating a little bit, but being grateful for any and all orchids that did bloom out for me, I am including a clip of this gorgeous orchid because wow, for the five days that I had her, yep, she should be able to bloom for about two weeks at least, but I only got five days out of her still. This little clip also belongs in my video because yeah, this orchid is super important to me and well, for that reason, I wanted to honor her. But when we move to the west side of the patio, I still have Cousin It in bloom, Maxillaria variabilis. I'm starting to pick off more and more tired blooms, but we still have more to come. There are more buds tucked away in that display. No, I have never bothered to count them. But if I was going along the lines and principles and thoughts of 500, I think we would get there. 500 easily. And then some. <laughs> but what I haven't brought outside are my two magnificent and Graecums that are currently in bloom. And oh my goodness, what a joy they are. Especially when I get to sit at my desk at night. It is so nice to know that there's a presence in the background because of the fragrance that they are exuding right now. I have two beautiful blooms on my sesquipedale variety bossery with an amazing long spur. So this is like the smaller version of a sesquipedale because the regular version would match the size of the crestwood. I'm really pleased to see that despite all the headaches and the darkness that they have to contend with, inside the growth space while they overwinter that they are still so generous and inclined to bloom for me because their light levels drop considerably as from mid-November all the way up until probably the end of April into mid-May before they come outside again. Very grateful that these orchids that do like a lot of light, bright shade preferably, no direct sun, but then for this stretch, this entire stretch, in relation to what they get during the warmer months of the year, they are in perpetual darkness, which is such a shame. It kills me to actually think of my Angrecums in those circumstances, but this is what they do for me. Regardless, I am so grateful. The three blooms also of the Crestwood have bloomed out. Eventually, she'll get big enough, I hope, bar anything going wrong that I don't have to prop up the spike with any kind of tape <laughs> that I'd be able to see the blooms from below. But right now, these two don't make me feel so bad when I'm at work. It's very, very cold at night. And then I still have their beautiful, I would say a soapy jasmine fragrance, which I find so pleasant because it is fresh. It's not like the fragrance of a catacetone that is spicy and warm that sort of fills the room and makes a cold room feel warmer. This is in contradiction to that. It is the opposite. It is jasmine, it is fresh, it is beautiful. And then the closer you get, you get more into the soapy kind of smell. I personally love it. And then there's a note of vanilla right at the end, but that is not so obvious for me. 
I am sorry I'm not bringing them out. It is dangerous to maneuver them too much, handle them too much at this point in time, simply because of the amount of roots and the length of the roots of the crest wood. It makes handling very, very difficult. I am a little bit clumsy, especially during cold temperatures when my hip will suddenly give out, so it's too risky. And while my bossery hasn't got that extensive of a root system, there's more individual long roots that can be handled much, much easier. Well, she's a little bit top heavy now with her spike and there's no way I want any movement to abrade the roots. We know the reputation of Angraecums do not disturb the roots or else you will probably set them back from blooming another five years. Personally, I don't know if that is the case. If you have experience along those lines that it has happened to you, please let me know. I don't want to risk it because like I said at the beginning, we have fought hard for these blooms. Temperature matching indoor outdoors before the terrace door opens to avoid bud blast, moving orchids around so that they are in the indoor blooming alley, kinda, sorta, like, you know? We don't need to invite any other problems, but I did wanna bring the ones that I can move outside because seeing orchid blooms in the sunshine, ugh, there's nothing better than that just like seeing orchids in the pouring rain. I don't know, it just does something for me. And I hope that this video did something for you, that you enjoyed it. And one more reminder, in case that nine second intro wasn't long enough, please hit the like button. I would so appreciate it. Welcome if you have just subscribed to my channel. I appreciate the support and thank you to everybody that has been watching my videos to date. I appreciate you a lot. I say it, I mean it every time, all the time. Have yourselves a beautiful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.